This is me, the Undead Viking. I'm here with my cat, Lily, today. She's she's a sick kitty, so I'm trying to comfort her a little bit. Uh, but I'm here to talk to you about a game called The Few and the Cursed. Uh, we are kind of, a, a friend of mine who runs a local game store, and also comic book store, said we are in like kind of a golden age of like independent comics right now. And so when I was contacted to do this game review, I had no idea that this was a really, really uh, well-developed, well-regarded comic. I had no idea. I used to read a lot of comics, and I used to read a lot of things, uh, you know, about comics, and I was kind of into the comic hobby as much as I was into the board game hobby that I am now. So um, I love discovering uh, new comics, new worlds, and things like that that have been created, and then this is a fantastic one. Um, this is a deck building game uh, that I really, really enjoy, which, you know, is a rare thing for me. Uh, deck building games uh, tend to, I've kind of exhausted my uh, temperance for those, uh, you know, and, but if they bring something cool and new and awesome to the table, uh, and something that just makes me enjoy them, then I really, really dig it. Uh, in this game, uh, the players will represent uh, these desperados that are traveling the world of the few and the cursed, uh, trying to get victory points, or grit as it's called, uh, and trying to become like the most uh, like powerful outlaw slash, you know, Old West hero uh, that they possibly can be over the course of the game. They're going to, um, you know, track down, they're going to be bounty hunters, they'll be monster hunters, um, and they'll also be cursed. Uh, slowly but surely they'll become more and more cursed and they'll need to figure out ways to combat uh, those curses that they're going to be uh, subjected to as well. So let me show you how the game is played, uh, show you the really, really awesome art, and then I'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Awesome. All right, so let's learn how to play the game. Now, I am not going to go through an entire, like, session of the game or everything, but I am going to show you how a turn works and also touch on a lot of the mechanisms that you're going to be using. Now, this is a prototype I was sent. Um, the miniatures I have are 3D printed, uh, and I'm, you know, assuming they are not going to be ghost-like, if you will, but just keep that in mind. But, you know, as far as, like, the art, uh, you know, very nice-looking art. Obviously, it's based on the comic book, something I'm really excited to actually read. I want to read that comic book. And I should mention that I... You you know, not having the full backstory of the entire like like setting did not hamper my enjoyment of the game in any way. If anything, it just inspired me to like want to dig deeper into the like realm or the mythos of uh, this this source material. But regardless, um, each character uh, you're gonna have uh, like like I said, I have a four player game set up. Each character uh, will get a character board, like here's uh, the redhead, uh, and like, it tells you what the starting stats are. Like she, the, uh, this character doesn't start with any money, uh, but they start at four health, they start with two bullets, and they are not cursed at all at the beginning of the game. Uh, these two levels right here tell you uh, what their uh, like starting, uh, they're, they're starting uh, uh, like, maximum bullet capacity and the like the maximum curse capacity is uh, before their character becomes cursed. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But anyway, and there's Jebediah and there is Annabelle. Now I would you know I don't like I said I don't know the full story behind these, but you kind of learn a little bit as you play the game. Anyway, I took this guy named Messanus just because he's got a beard and I think he looks really cool. Uh, you know he starts with a lot of money. He starts with 12 money so I'm gonna go ahead and take 12 money. Now, um, this this setting uh, is like, what if the, uh, the 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 Pacific Ocean dried up? I guess, and so it's now like a giant desert. Uh, so, like, money is water, and water is money. You know, which you know makes sense, right? You know, like if uh, you know, like water was a precious resource, you could trade it for things, which I think is the purpose. But a lot of, like, the encounters and stuff will reference water, like, oh, you can take uh, money, you know, like, oh, take plus four water, or you can drink the water to, like, heal yourself, or things like that. So, there's some stuff like that. Um, now, each character is going to get a character card, and it starts off on the non curse side. So, here's Messanus, and it basically has an action on here. Uh, that says, I, as I, because you get to take one action on your turn, you can take an action and gain seven money. Uh, like, and this guy just seems to always have money or something. Like, once again, I'm sure it's part of his backstory. Uh, but also, if like you use up 
uh, two bullets, I can get plus three attack, and those are those symbols are that's on there. Now, if I ever become cursed as Messanus, uh, I flip this card over, and then I suffer a penalty. Once per round, I must spend one money, or I suffer uh, a health damage. So, you know, just something like that. And, like, his curse threshold is a two. And if my curse ever, like, this, my curse level ever reaches that, then I'm going to be in trouble because I'm going to have to flip that card over. And and you can reduce your curse level later through good deeds and things like that. So it isn't like a, a, a perpetual thing if that happens. Um, each person is going to start with their starting deck of cards. They'll have the name on them, like like so. So you'll know which is the starting deck. The back of the cards will look exactly the same because this is a deck building game and you won't want to know uh, what those uh, like cards are. So, you know, like you, you so you wouldn't know like which are your upgrade cards. Like so you don't know what what you're going to be drawing next. Um, you do get, there's this spot over here for job cards, and you can get more jobs as the game uh, goes on. Jobs are, are, you get in San Andreas, which is the city in the middle of the board. Um, if you are in that section when you do your encounter phase of your turn, you get to, like, go to the job board if you want to. Uh, you can go to the store and purchase things. Um, you know, and also you can spend money on upgrades. You can buy bullets. You can, you know, increase your ammo capacity, heal, uh, curse capacity, things like that. You can spend money on those things in that location if you use that on your encounter phase. But you do get to draw a bunch, like four job cards and select two. These are just two I, I chose. Um, like So at the end of the game, you score one point for every job you've completed. So like, you know, I just have this and I put that face down in front of me. And if I, you know, because this is not a cooperative game, it's a competitive game. So hopefully I can, I can complete a bunch of jobs and I can get a bunch of points that way. And like, here's one where uh, like you, you have a bodyguard that uh, like has stats on the bottom, as you can see here and here. And if I can complete uh, like this, uh, like by spending these resources, uh, like by the, the two movement and the two fighting, I can then uh, complete this job and I can earn uh, the two grit, which is the victory points, or and, and the one money for doing so. Now, jobs, if you still have them and you have not completed them, uh, they do count against you at the end of the game. So, it, yeah, and you can complete a job at any time. Sometimes, you know what, I just grab some jobs real quick. I mean, just remember, these are things that you do as, as, when you have an encounter phase in San Andreas. But there are jobs, and i got to find one here to kind of show this to you, uh, that will like have you do specific actions like here is like if you do a camp action in Keola Springs if if you if you do that action which that location is right there uh, if you complete that action of camping in Keola Springs you'll get the rewards for doing so uh, you know and or like let's say here's camping at like the hangman's tree which you know is uh, located here uh, and then you would earn the rewards up here and you would earn, you know, four money and six grit, you know, for, for, for doing so. Now you might be saying, well, that seems easy. Why would you do it? Well, whenever you have a turn, you have to do an encounter. And when you do an encounter, um, like bad things can happen because of the fact that you got, got to draw from these encounter decks over here. And certain places like the cursed hangman's tree is a cursed place and bad things happen in cursed places. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll take a step back here just a little bit to kind of go through what you'll do on your turn, but just keep that in mind as far as the jobs are concerned. And since I talked about the jobs, you know, I might as well talk about, uh, like, purchasing things from the store. Uh, now, these are, these are things that, um, like, when you purchase items from the store, you can see, like, a horse will cost you six money, and it gives you plus two movement. Um, these are things that you can exhaust. Basically, you, you tilt them. You, you place these cards in front of you, and then you will tilt them to show that you've exhausted them and used them. And when you do that, uh, then you'll just get that resources uh, with that. And they're kind of like a... Uh, and then, like, at the end of your turn, you'd unexhaust them so they'd be ready to be used at, at the next turn. Um, you know, some of these things might uh, be, uh, like, here's a shotgun, which, you know, costs nine, and it gives you plus three uh, fighting if you have it. Now, you might always see over here there's, like, this thing that has two guns on it. That means that it's going to take up two of your guns. So, like, basically, like, you, you think of hands, like, it takes two hands to use uh, a gun to do so. Um, and then you'll notice over here there's like this little uh, like thing with a gun right here and a gun right here. And then there's these two uh, like little like backpacks right there. You might have noticed that the horse 
like is uh like has that backpack symbol on there so if you had bought the horse you'd put it down here and you'd have one of those two things that you could use and but the gun the shotgun would actually use up both hands i mean i'll find a a one-handed gun to show you well here's like uh like a harmonica that you can purchase and like if you can exhaust it for a money uh because i'm assuming you play the harmonica for people and then you'd have it so, but that takes up one of your gun slots for so, so to speak and here is you know a knife that you can use and it gives you plus one uh, to fighting if you use it so it's just stuff like that and and going to the store is never a bad idea because of the fact that like if you have the money to spend um you can definitely upgrade yourself a little bit all right so taking a step back since that that was jobs and that was store let's just actually talk about a turn so the turn starts off with the improvise uh section of your turn now at the beginning of the game and at the end of your like last turn what you would have done is you would have taken four cards off the top of your deck just like um, you know, if you're not familiar with uh, deck building games, that's a pretty standard thing where you're just going to take a certain number of cards off the top of your deck, and those are going to be the cards that you're going to have access to on that particular turn. So just looking quickly at these cards that I drew, um, like I have a card here, the Swordmaster card, it just tells you what it is. Um, this tells me that it's one of my starting cards. It gives me plus one to my attack there. Uh, here is, um, you know, leaving the past behind, it gives me plus two to my movement. Uh, this one gives me uh, plus two to my attack but um here is the miscellaneous uh like plus one to my curse but i can copy the effect of another card played this turn so like do i want to you know curse myself a little bit in order to copy an effect in case i want to so it's kind of neat that, that you have that ability but first thing there's this giant deck of upgrade cards here the first thing i get to do is i get to take two of these cards I get to pick one and I get to add it to my deck. And so we're looking here and so we have an upper card uh, like that gives me plus two uh, to my attack, but if I trash it, it'll give me plus three. And that's what that little uh, trash can symbol there is on the bottom. And then here uh, we have a snatch card that gives me plus two to my attack, plus two to my movement, but also plus one to my curse. Ugh, you, know, I, you know, it's like, do I want to take a curse card? So, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I'm not a big, well, you know what, what the heck, I'll take it. And that, so we take the card we didn't take, and we go ahead and we just put that in the discard pile. Um, any of the piles of cards that you have, if you ever should go through them for any reason, you are able to just, you know, uh, shuffle up the discard piles and set up uh, another deck of cards for, for yourself to go. All right, so that is the entire improvise action, uh, like you just, uh, the beginning card. A lot of times you'll take certain actions or you'll like do certain encounters and things like that that will allow you to take the improvise action again. Uh, you know, so just keep that in mind when it says to do the improvise action, that is the improvise uh, phase of your, of your turn. Now you move on to the encounter phase. Depending upon where you are, you're gonna have an encounter. I've already talked about, you know, like encountering the town here. Uh, you can upgrade your character, you can get jobs, you can go to the store. Those are different things you can do. If you are outside of San Andreas, um, you, you, if your character is like wandering about and, and, and doing your thing, there are several different places that you might end up being. Um, there are canyons, uh, there are deserts, uh, there are uh, ruins, you know, so depending upon where you are, you are going to end up drawing one of these two types of encounter cards over here. One is just a standard encounter card, and the other is a ruins in, uh, no, I'm sorry, a, a cursed, a cursed encounter card. So let's just, uh, let's, let's, let's do a standard one first. So let's just go ahead and I'll put myself in this canyon here. If I, it, you know, I mean, I'll talk about how you move about the board here in just a little bit. But remember, you before you can move, before you can do anything else, you have to do an encounter phase of your turn. Um, this is so like if you camped in a cursed place to, to finish off a job, that's the detriment to it. You have to get, you know, you're going to have to do something in that spot the next turn. So first thing, I'm, this is a standard encounter. I'm just going to draw uh, the standard encounter card. So up on the top here, you can see, depending upon where you are, uh, desert, ruins, or canyon, um, you are going to look at that and you're going to take that as your action. So I do love the fact that we have so many different cards. There's a lot of different encounter cards and the fact that they have like three different spots depending upon where you are. Um, you know, I just like these. And also these are like the narrative thing. So you read these out loud. And the other cool thing is, is that if another person happens to be in the same spot as you, uh, they can have the encounter as well. Uh, now this, once again, is not a cooperative thing. Uh, they don't, you know, get to, they don't work 
with you. They just have the encounter as well as you. So just keep that in mind. Um, so here, Canyon, uh, you can't shake the feeling that you're being hunted. Uh, you decide to stay awake and keep watch. Um, a group of kids shows up and starts searching through your things. Will you spring from the shadows and scare them off? So you have to spend uh, one of you. You'd have to like create one attack value to, to scare them off and then improvise again this turn. So there's that improvise again this turn that I was spoken to or let them take some of your things. So you'd lose three money, but you would also lose two curse. You know, so this is one of the things where it's like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna let them, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be the nice person. That's how you lose curse or whatever and so many things. So just look at the other ones, just so you can kind of see. Um, desert, uh, black vortex starts swirling in front of your eyes. If you're not cursed, you uh, hastily leave this, uh, the desert uh, for sanctuary somewhere else, move to an adjacent space. If you are cursed, the black clouds engulf you and heal some of your wounds. So, you know, that might not be a bad thing that you're cursed. So that's kind of like one of the cool things I like about this game. And then finally, the ruins. Uh, a slinky old man stands by. Well, he brandishes a knife and tells you that he wants all of your gear for a sip of water. You can punch him in the jaw, so minus one attack value, or kick him down the well, minus one movement. After the scumbag has been dispatched, you drink from the well and then add four, you know, money uh, to your thing. So, like, those are just some, like, standard encounters that you, that you might experience if you are in those and like you have a choice and you read those a lot it's kind of a fun little interactive moment between you and the players so if you're in a cursed spot however you are going to draw a cursed card and so here and these will basically they, they I'll show you a few of these but basically these kind of tend to give you uh, um, like a few like options of what you can do. So here's a caravan for water. Um, you can, if with four movement, you can ride with them and then you get plus two bullets and plus two money. Uh, with four attack, you can rob them, uh, get plus four uh, bullets and plus two uh, curse, or you can wave goodbye, minus one curse. You're just the nice person, you wave at them and you get to minus one curse, something like that. Here, let me find one that's uh, maybe has like a cool decision here. So, uh, like here, like discover treasure. Uh, discard three cards, add an artifact to your discard pile. I haven't even talked about the artifacts yet. These, those are these cards that are in the these corners. So just keep that in mind. We'll get to those in just a second. Um, three money, destroy it, uh, minus two curse, or just leave it alone, uh, minus one curse. So there's, you know, and once again, like the cursed encounters will just kind of give you several different options of how to handle uh, that, that particular encounter. And, and you, you share that with the other players, reveal it, and do it. Now, if you are ever in a situation like where you can't do something, like you don't have the right cards in your hand giving you the uh, right amount of resources to be able to do it, uh, you say that, reveal the cards to the other players so you, they know you're not lying, and then you just don't do anything. So, uh, but like it's it's, Usually there's an option. That, that's a really rare circumstance that that will happen. All right, so uh, that uh, is the encounter phase. Like you, you either encounter a spot or you encounter the city of San Andreas. Now we're actually in the action phase. Now you might have spent some of the cards that you have already on the encounters that you've ex that you've experienced, uh, but you know for whatever you then now can like reveal cards one by one from your hand and take different actions. Movement is really really simple. Um, movement is just like you, you the number you can see that there are these symbols in between uh, different spots on the board um like it'll tell you how much movement it takes to travel that sometimes there's a spot that takes two movement to move from here to here sometimes it only just one movement from move from here to here sometimes there is a secondary uh a, like price for doing that uh, some of these spots will have a cursed uh, uh, spot in there, meaning that if you travel that path, you are going to take a curse for traveling from that point to that point. You can't really avoid it, uh, but hopefully you can get rid of it later. Sometimes there'll be like this little combat symbol. You have to have a combat point to be able to travel from one place to the other. Now I should mention that like when you discard, you don't get to hold over uh, like the the resources that you're gaining uh, from your cards, uh, you know, like from like one phase to the next. So, you know, sometimes like you'll have like leftover combat and you're like, dang it, but you can't keep keep it, you know, from one, one part to another. So, um, you know, you, you might end up saying, you know what, I don't want to spend, 
like a combat from moving here to here. But if that's the case, you can choose to just take a damage on your uh, character card for doing so. If it, you know, and just um, like basically showing that like you didn't fight, but you just took a little, you took some scrapes, some bullet wounds, or whatever, uh, traveling, you know, from that path. Now, you can move wherever you like as long as you have the movement and are willing to take any of the negatives uh, from moving from one spot to the next. There isn't just like you can only move one or anything like that. Um, this is where like having uh, the, the, the store items really comes in handy where you just you just exhaust those and like, look, okay, I have a horse. There, I got plus two movement. I don't got to use any of my cards. I can save them and I can just use my horse to get two movement to go from this place to that. Kind of a neat thing to have. Um, after you move and you can take an action. Now you can move again after you take an action, uh, but you can't take another action. You only get one action on your turn. So actions are, if you're in one of these corner spots, uh, like I mentioned the artifacts, you can recover an artifact. You just pick up the artifact cards that are in that location and you then are going to like just pick which one you want. Now, I'm positive that these will be colored in. This is a prototype that I received, so I received, so you, you do it. But you can pick one of these. So here's a touch of evil. Uh, it's worth three grit. Uh, uh, you know, trash a card from your hand to improvise again. Uh, here is uh, the book of Tella. It, you know, like it's worth four grit and it has all of these bonuses. Um, here's a boomerang, gives you plus six to your attacks, you know. So these are really good cards and you want to be able to get, get them. Now, you can only get one from each spot. So, uh, like when you travel there, uh, make sure that you, you get them. And there is only um, the number of players minus one in each location. So, like, you better get there quick and get your artifact uh, before somebody else snags it. And actually, like, in collecting artifact, artifacts is a way that you can push the game uh, towards the end of the game as well. So, uh, and I'll talk about how the game ends in a little bit, but you just so you know how that works. If you want, as an action, you can take, you can do another encounter. You just, depending upon where you are, you just draw one of those cards and you can take another encounter. Um, if you travel to San Andreas on this turn, you can encounter San Andreas. You can you can go through the process of, you know, jobs or store or upgrading your character if you want to. Um, that's, that's an option as well. Uh, the other, now the big thing you can do is you can defeat a bounty, which is a really, uh, it's a good way to get grit. Remember, grit is your victory points in the game. Now, there are these four wanted cards over here. All of these have, um, basically, when you, when you defeat them, you'll flip them over to the other side, and they're kind of the same thing, but, you know, just a little different. So, these are the Crowmen, uh, Crows of Mana Alana, and so it, it tells you, you know, last seen on a cursed location. So, if you're on a cursed location, you can fight these. It takes six combat to defeat them, and if you defeat them, you get minus four uh, to your your curse level, and you get two grit for doing so. And if you defeat them, and you want to, you flip it over, and now you have this the other side. It's a five to defeat them. Last seen on a curse location, you're probably still on a curse location. Then you can get minus three to your curse, and then two grit. So this will flip kind of back and forth each time they're defeated. And you can, if you have enough, uh, like you, you can defeat them more than once, obviously, because they don't ever get destroyed. They're always gonna be there. So like this one's last seen in canyons, this one's last seen in ruins, and this one's last seen on desert. So even if you aren't in a big named location, like an expedition or, you know, what have you, um, you can have the option of uh, like, like always, you know, fighting and, and being able to get some sort of bonus. Um, you know, like the, the, the demons allow you to trash a card, uh, the, the, um, the zombies, uh, like, you know, these get you money, uh, the, the gang gets you money on, on either side, so, like, they have different rewards as well, and, like, just like any deck building game, if you're not familiar with tra trashing a card, um, trashing a card basically thins out your deck, as, as you get more and more upgrade cards, uh, they'll have bigger and better abilities, and uh, like a lot of times, like the, the 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 cards that aren't as good, that aren't really helping you that much later on in the game, you want to get them out of your hand so you can find you can get the the good cards uh, quicker into your hand and be able to use them. All right, so. Also for encounters are, there's the most wanted over here. Now these are much more difficult encounters. Like here is, uh, yeah, here I'll show you this guy. So this is the Rattler's Elite. And it'll tell you last seen in Mountain View. So if I wanted to fight this, I would have to go to this location and I'd have to defeat um, the, the Rattler's Elite. You can see it takes 10 
uh, like combat to defeat them, and the reward is going to be five money and four grit for doing so. Now, if you look at the back, there's nothing on the back. Now, your whole one of the ways, another way that the game can end is that if you, as you defeat these one by one, you can see these have like a, a black border. Maybe you can't really tell. It might not be able to tell. You can see this has got purple. This is a black border. This is one of the monsters of the game. So the mo so this is the white demon. And the white demon has, takes 16 to defeat him, and he's worth 8 grit. And because, you know, he's, he's one of the big bads of the game, uh, he actually does get a, a miniature to rep represent him. And so here's like his miniature. And so when you reveal uh, one of these, then these monsters actually show up on the board. Now, why is that important? Because after these are revealed um, at the end of turn, these will start moving towards San Andreas. And, and, and one, one step by one step. And if a monster ever reaches San Andreas without being killed, uh, the game immediately ends at that moment. So this is a game, it's a competitive game where you're trying to get points, you're gonna be increasing your grit on the track as you like complete jobs and other things, um, like killing monsters, so on and so forth. If you are not in the lead in points and you see this monster is getting closer and closer and gonna be attacking San Andreas, uh, you are gonna lose the game if it reaches there. So you, your incentive is to not only get there to kill it, to get the points for doing so, but it is also the incentive uh, you know, to like stop the game from being over uh, so uh, you can make sure that like you get to win the game, so to speak, and, and not like not give the win to somebody else. Now, I, there is the one miniature there's there's this giant like snake demon uh, thing uh, that, that is not like the translucent translucent ghost uh, 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 like uh, miniature, if you will, like the others are. But yeah, obviously these are super cool minis, and if you're looking, you know, I, I, I dig them. I, you know, and a lot of times in, uh, uh, like, especially in a deck building game, where deck building is like the main um, uh, mechanism, like, if, if I hear those miniatures in it, I'm like, ugh, you know, it's like it's just kind of some added thing. But no, I mean, this is like, and I'll talk more about this in my final thoughts, but um, the, the deck building is a mechanism here, but there's a lot more to it as far as like, you know, moving your, you, you, this is an adventure game. It's an adventure game that uses uh, deck building as a mechanism. And so the presence of these miniatures to represent these different monsters and the characters and whatever, um, are, are just add so much to the immersion. I mean, this is uh, uh, like, you know, a thematic slash Ameritrash game in my opinion. But I'll talk about, once again, talk about that in my final thoughts. All right. so. Uh, one of the main things about this deck building process is that when, if, if you're not familiar with deck building, and I'm sure you are, but if you ever run out of cards to draw, because at the end of your turn you'll discard the cards you haven't used and you'll draw cards out of your deck, um, if you can't uh, draw, put four cards into your hand, you will have to reshuffle uh, your deck and then, you know, draw your card up to four. When that happens, you're, no matter where your character is, you automatically go back to San Andreas. It's just it, you re get recalled back there and you're going to start over in that location. Now, um, it isn't like most games where it's just like you continue on. You just, you know, reshuffle and so on and so forth. Now, you might be saying, well, how do I get anything done? Uh, like if I'm constantly getting dragged back to the city. Well, the way it works is that you get to uh, take an action. You know, remember, you only get one action. You can take a camp action. Remember I talked about camping and, like, the cursed locations and things like that? When you take a camp action, you get to reshuffle your deck you, and, and uh, manually do it. And when you do that, you don't get sent back to San Andreas. Now, you might want to go back to San Andreas. Like, I don't want to have to, you know, be, to work my way back there to do anything. Great, fine, super. I, I, I went back and do a thing. But... Um, to prevent that from happening, you will have to, like, take a camp action if you are, you know, fine and you're doing well and you don't need to go back here and heal or buy bullets or anything like that. Uh, you can stay out in the wilds and keep your adventure going. Now, as I said, this is a competitive game. If two players are in the same location, uh, a player can choose to attack the player that they're in the same spot as. Now, this will cost you two curse points, uh, and so you might not want to do that. But... If you ha can reveal double the amount of attack power on the cards that you have, then the player's health at that moment, uh, you will get a reward of grit 
and money equal to uh, equal to where their health is. So say like uh, like somebody attacked me and I had health four and they, they revealed uh, eight attack power, uh, they would get two curse, they would get four money, and they would get four grit uh, for doing so. And then I, for being attacked, would have to lose, I'm sorry, I was on a three, so I'm gonna put it up to four and cheat here a little bit, but then I would have to lose one point of health after they attacked me. Uh, so, you know, that is attacking. Now, I mean, I didn't do that a lot when I played the game. Uh, I got attacked a few times. So I always found it more fun to do the adventure stuff. But um, it definitely is a situation where you can kind of push somebody down a little bit and and push yourself up, and it might not be a bad idea in certain situations. Um, as another action, and the last action you could possibly do is taking the character action that you have. And like, so Mesenus has the action of just gaining money. So if all else fails, like you can take the character action uh, if, if, you, if there's nothing else on the board that you want to do. All right, so that is when if you have cards left over, you discard them, draw back up to four. If you have to reshuffle, you go back to San Andreas, and then the next person goes. And, the, and that, and if it you were, uh, and if it, if everybody's taking a turn, then the first player marker will move to the next uh, player. It doesn't remain the first player ever the for the entire time. Uh, so uh, the game is going to end in one of several different ways. I already told you that if a monster makes it into the middle, uh, then the game is over at that point. However, if all of the artifact cards have been collected, that will end the game as well. And if three out of the four uh, possible monsters are defeated, uh, then the game ends as well. It should be noted that if anybody gets to 21 uh, victory points and a monster has not been revealed yet, you will go ahead and pick a deck and you'll take the back, the bottom monster card and put it to the top. So like if that happened and you haven't had a monster yet, like here, uh, here's here's the Wendigo, you, you'd take that and put it on the top of the deck like so. So, and then place the Wendigo on the board. And that's a way like, so like the game can kind of speed up and um, you know, you know, push it towards end game scenarios uh, quicker uh, if that hasn't happened yet for you. Uh, whoever has the most grit uh, will win the game. You total up all the grit you earned during the game plus any that you might have gotten from the job cards. And whoever did the best job at earning victory points will be the winner of the game. But for me, uh, the winner of the game really was like all of us because like I said, this is a game of narrative kind of story completion. And I really enjoyed like all the different encounters and all the different things and all the different interactions that I had with the other players at the table. But let me talk about that and a whole lot more uh, in my final thoughts. All right, thank you for taking the time to learn how to play the game. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it made sense to you. Now, uh, the game board obviously and the art is just fantastic. I can't wait to see what the final miniatures look like. Um, but I talked a little bit about deck building and I talked a little bit about the fact that like maybe it isn't my most favorite mechanism. This is totally a thematic game. This is totally, I mean, I, I hate the word Ameritrash, but I don't really like thematic either. I think both of them are kind of a, a poor representation of what type of game this is. Uh, this is a game that has a narrative style to it. It has uh, the players enjoying a, 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 an adventure that their characters are on and they get to experience the other person's adventures as well because you're going to be reading those things aloud, you're going to have fun decisions, fun choices that you're going to make, and you're, you're going to watch your characters level up and change as the game goes on. You're going to envision the things that are happening in the game as you play, and I think that's the cool thing about this, and, and about narrative games, about adventure games. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with a good resource engine game, but when you are, like, just pushing cubes on a table, I don't envision, you know, like, uh, the, the whole process of medieval farming or anything like that. I don't, I don't, I just look at this as, like, a little engine game that I'm making. However, when I play games like this, I experience in my brain the experience of those players. I played a lot of the Deadlands role-playing game way back in the day, and this game just feels like it should be like the Deadlands role-playing game, uh, you know, and, and you know, in a in a in a in a board game fashion. And um, it's something that I that I dig, uh, and I, I enjoy a great deal. Now. Uh, the theme aside, which is excellent, the art aside, which is excellent, uh, the game does a lot of things really, really well. Um, it does not hang around too long. Uh, adventure games live and die on keeping uh, the, the players engaged and having fun. So if a certain player's turn 
takes way too long. The other players are going to be bored waiting for them to have a chance to do something. So the fact that player turns are quick and they're fast and they're over and the next person gets to go, really important. Plus the game itself can last too long. Uh, the fact that there is a, a like kind of end game trigger, uh, you know, set up to like kind of just force the monsters to show up and then plus the monsters can end the game as well, uh, just kind of prevents the game from dragging on. And like, you know, we've all played a game of Talisman that lasted way, way too long, which might be more than two turns, but I didn't say that, but you know what I mean? It's like adventure games can can be a, a, a long drawn out affairs where it ends up nobody had any fun not even the person that won. And I really mean what I said, like, you know, as far as like, yeah, okay, you might win the game because you have the most points or, or whatever, but for me, it's the journey that your characters are going to take, you know, like the whole process of, of going through the actions of, of, you know, hunting down the criminals, hunting down the monsters, and like, and again, envisioning that narrative story and just having fun. And, and the idea, I mean, basically, the, the world that, that this game is based in has so much to it. Uh, I'm sure it has so many different storylines, so many different, like, characters and monsters and locations and all those things that, uh, you know, the ability, like, adding more to this game through expansion and stuff like that will keep it fresh and, and new uh, for all the people that will play it in the future as well. So, um, you know, it is a deck building game, yes, definitely, and, and you are, it does have the classic deck building elements of, like, I need to get rid of these, these crummy cards and get good cards into my hand, um, you know, and, and things like that that are going on, but it, it almost, it just takes a back seat, you know, in my mind, to, like, the whole process of the game and the narrative uh, and the thematic and the, like, you know, just basically that type of game, that adventure game that I, that I really, really like. So, not only do I think it's going to please the people that are going to like deck building mechanisms and like those things that go on, but it's really going to please the people that do like board games that tell them a story as they play and, and engage them with the immersion and the feel. And plus, like as I mentioned, with the miniatures and everything like that, I mean, I hope that they make a ton of those for this game, a ton of different creatures, some different player uh, uh, player characters that you can be, things like that, then we'll just increase that immersion, increase that, that, that buy-in that I have as a player of the game itself. So there you go. If you have any questions about the game, please ask me. I didn't get a game box. That's why I don't got anything to show you. I do apologize for that. But uh, if you have any questions about it, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. Um, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, remember that you're an awesome human being and you make the world a better place. So be the best version of you you possibly can be. I'm going to try to do the same. Talk to you later. The cat. Say hello to the sick kitty. Bye-bye. <laughs>